I think uh, sometimes one criticism can outweigh maybe several compliments, could I say? Like you can say several nice things, but then one biting criticism, it feels like there's not an equal one criticism to one compliment or you know there's it's not it's not equal one and one if you admire someone hopefully it's going to be a consistent thing and the criticism part is pretty pretty rare if 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 at all Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Fascinating Womanhood YouTube channel. I'm Dixie Annalyn Forsyth. This is the channel where we talk about everything and support everything feminine and that supports long-term happy relationships. My husband, Bob, we are doing this together. We usually are here with Cherry, our daughter, but she is on vacation with her family. And so we're just here doing this ourselves. We'll do it occasionally from time to time. The subject we're going to talk about today is on how men like to be admired. And we're doing this because we've had a number of women write in and say they want specific tips on admiring their husband and what men like to hear. Although we all mean well, sometimes uh, ladies have said things that have inadvertently kind of made their husband irritated or upset and they don't know what they have done wrong. And so they're wanting to do it right and the appropriate way, but they feel like they don't really understand it. So we got we got Bob here. He's we're lucky because he's a professional neuropsychologist and he's also a man. So why do you think that men sometimes get irritated? Well, I suppose it depends on how it's done. I mean, if you you just come out of the blue with a compliment, he might be thinking, I wonder what she mm -hmm. wants. So what is this a uh, manipulation? <laughs> she overdrawn at the bank? <laughs> yeah, you're overdrawn. <laughs> what, what, what is it you want? Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I suppose that this can be a little tricky. But, you know, in a relationship, we get to know each other pretty well. I think it depends on how you do a compliment. If you sincerely see something that you admire and you express it, if you do it spontaneously, mm -hmm. I think most guys are going to appreciate that. I don't think they're going to see it as, as a negative. Now, if you never do it and all of a sudden you start gushing, gushing, <laughs> well, whoa, you're they might get a little suspicious. Yeah. It's like, like, yeah. So, you know, I think it's something you can maybe start, start to do without you know getting too exaggerated too quickly everybody likes a compliment well, okay. I, I think men love to get a compliment really i was thinking could it also possibly be that some men might have experienced a certain amount of emotional trauma from another woman who did that sort of thing and they weren't necessarily really sincere they're trying to manipulate them and ma manipulate them and so they got a little uh, distrustful Guard wall, guard, up. guard yeah. Yeah, wall, yeah, wall of reserve. They wall, come up a little yeah. bit. Well, there may be that. We've got three tips to share with you today on how to do it correctly. Before that, let me just say what it and any of you, and I'm sure all of you have experienced a situation where you've been going about your business, going to the store or whatever, and somebody will, usually it's a woman, will spontaneously say like to me, oh, I love your shoes or Mm -hmm. or or something that feels really good because it's very sincere and it's very spontaneous mm -hmm. they don't know you so any compliment to you would be something that they've noticed right then if you notice how that feels if someone says i love your hair or something like that it's usually something more physical because they don't know you that feels really good because it's spontaneous and it's mm -hmm. sincere okay so number one the tips number one men need to feel confident it's one of their big admiration in any area of his competence is going to uh, really help him and make him feel validated early in our marriage i think sometimes i would say something to you that i wanted mm -hmm. and you would say something to me that i wanted like i might say man you really did a great job on that meal or you know i love the way you made me a little dress for one of our kids i give you kind of a competence compliment mm -hmm. and you would say to me how much, I love how much you love me and i think Okay, yeah, that's great. But I think to myself, well, that's great. I know you do, but, you know, how do you see me as a competent man? <laughs> and so I almost yeah. responded more if you said, 
wow, I love the way you, you know, did that in the garden, or I love the way you handled that situation with that uh, angry person, or you, you, you didn't beat them up or something. I mean, you just the way you handled it. When you gave me a competence compliment, I think I responded a little more to that. And when I told you, I love you dearly, you take my breath away, things like that. You, <laughs> you see, you'd respond better than that if I said, man, you're, a great, you you're a great cook. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's one other thing that's kind of back to back with confidence and that is he, his need to feel like your hero. Yeah. And yeah. if he feels like, if you feels that you feel that he is a hero to you in a very real way he may not save your life your literal life every day but he is your champion and goes out there and is protective of you and fights for you and when you notice that complimenting admiring him for that specifically is really really good could i just say sure. i remember once early in our marriage you said something about you saved me because of some things you'd been through when you were younger and you felt like I came at a important time, made you feel more safe and more almost like you've been rescued mm -hmm. from some traumatic things that had happened. Mm -hmm. And I remember that really um, was important to me that I, that I felt like I'd rescued you or something like that. And, you know, well, you actually do all the time. I mm -hmm. feel, I feel it a lot. He rescues me when I'm low. I, I found that I kind of depend on it because I'm a very emotional person, like some of you are, and I get, I'm a worrier and I have these vulnerabilities that he doesn't have. And I really appreciate that he is strong where I am weak. And you may have a totally different husband, but recognizing where you need him and letting him know is really important and valuable to him and it will make him feel closer to you. The key is that it has to be uh, specific and that is number two. Okay. Be mm -hmm. very specific mm -hmm. and when possible, do it spontaneously like mm -hmm. you said before. Mm -hmm. But another thing that is also effective, if you say, you know, I've been thinking about this. I was thinking today when you were gone, about this and how much I admire you for this when this happened. And that also can mean a lot. You can say, I've been thinking about it. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. But be very specific about it, something that is that you've noticed and not the general, I really admire you, you're great. It's nice, but it doesn't hit home. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, I think admiration is interesting because when I maybe show admiration for you, I don't, that's not only good for you, it's good for me too. In mm -hmm. a way, we both feel good. Mm -hmm. So that is number two, be very specific. And we we stress this a lot in Fascinating Womanhood. This is not manipulative. This is something you've noticed. You know, a lot of times you probably have noticed things that just don't say it. Or you take him for granted a little bit. And then when you start treasure hunting and looking at him, this guy you fell in love with and who you married, and you start looking at him really you find you can find tons of things to admire from his ambition to his courage and going out there one more day and slugging it out in the world there's probably hundreds of things that you can admire about a man and his masculinity his courage the way he's your hero and saves you from all kinds of things even if it's from having to deal with obnoxious people on the phone like a few weeks ago uh, we mentioned on another video, we had a plumbing issue in our house. And by the way, it's still not fixed. I so appreciated uh, Bob talked to the insurance people and hassle with them wasn't a terrible hassle, but just dealing with all that, he took that on and spared me from having to do that. It was already, the disaster was already stressful enough. It's just down there. And number three, be sincere. Never assume you can fake it. You cannot fake it. If he doesn't know logic consciously, he'll know emotionally that you have faked it. It's insulting and it's also kind of manipulative and men will know it and sense it. So that it also goes, that's also ties in to being sincere is what not to do. Do not try to avoid making yourself vulnerable by 
sincerely expressing it. Don't try to do that. In the cases where a man may get kind of offended and say, I don't like you talking to me that way, he probably senses that you are perhaps insincere. Sometimes one criticism can outweigh maybe several compliments, could I say? Like you can t say several nice things, but then one biting criticism, it feels like there's not an equal one criticism to one compliment or you know there's it's not it's not equal one and one if if you admire someone hopefully it's going to be a consistent thing and the criticism part is pretty pretty rare if 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 at all <laughs> and bob is right if you have told your husband he's an idiot or a fool for example then you think oh that was terrible i need to come back and do things right it may take a while more than just one compliment yes yeah yeah before he actually emotionally accepts that and trusts you that's okay just be patient keep practicing these principles these are true principles these are not techniques they are not tactics or tricks this is the real thing well, i've just found that really developing a gratitude for one another i think people start in a relationship and everything's great and it's easy to compliment and everybody's happy but then over time you get more used to one another and uh, in your book i like the way you said you can be the magic in your relationship and i thought that's that's actually quite an important thought because you can either let things kind of fade or you can c constantly either treasure hunt or be looking for ways to appreciate and be grateful for who you're with and what they're doing. I think it builds both of you. Both are built from that. At the end of our lives, even before then, what our goal is we want the men that we love to think she is the best thing that ever happened to me. We're working on being the best thing that ever happened to him. Best meaning not that we're arrogant or anything, literally that he says that you're the best thing that's ever happened to me. These principles can help you get to that goal. You are the best thing that ever happened to me. You make me want to be a better man constantly. <laughs> and uh, I appreciate everything about this man. Some of you know, some of you don't know. I knew really early on that I wanted to marry him. I'm sure before he wanted to marry me, I didn't want anything else. And I was fortunate, and I did. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget about uh, Timeless. If you haven't read my new book, Timeless, and the workbook that goes with it is great because it really helps you. It's what you fill in yourself, helps you work on these principles and make them personal in your, in your life. Take care, and we'll see you next time.